Hi, this is Professor Fernandez. We are going to work on class notes E in lesson 10. So in this class notes, I want to change gears a little bit um, and talk about things that are not vector spaces. So I want to give you an example of how you would show that something is not a vector space. So if we want to show that something's not a vector space, well, remember that being a vector space means that you satisfy the 10 vector space axioms. And that means that if you want to show something is not a vector space, you have to find at least one of these axioms that is not satisfied. And once you've found one, you can stop. Uh, you can certainly show that many more are not satisfied, but for the purposes of showing something is not a vector space, one axiom that fails suffices. So going to this example here, V is given as a set of vectors with three components, uh, whose components are related by this equation. You can see how there are going to be all sorts of issues with this being a vector space, because um, if we start working through the axioms, many of them will fail. Oftentimes, as a little tip, axiom one, axioms one, two, and five are very uh, commonly not satisfied by spaces that are not vector spaces. So let me just remind you what those axioms are. I'm going to scroll up to remind you what they are. So here's the def definition of a vector space. Axiom one is the closure under addition. It says if you take two elements of V, you add them or subtract them, closure under, closure under subtraction as well, then so are U plus V. So the uh, results of U plus V and U minus V have to also be elements of V. If they are not, or if one of them is not, then you don't have a vector space. The second axiom is the closure under scalar multiplication. So if you take an element of V, multiply by a real number, then the product should be an element of V. If it's not, doesn't satisfy axiom two, not a vector space. Axiom five, this is the part that usually fails for many of these spaces that are not vector space. There exists an element Z of V such that U plus Z equals U. This is the zero element, right? So axiom five is the zero element axiom. Many spaces that are not vector spaces do not have a zero element. Okay, so let's scroll down here to this example. And I'm gonna show you actually that um, all five, uh, all three of these axioms fail for this space. And again, you could get away with just showing that one of them fails, but I'm, I'm doing this partly to help you understand these concepts. So axiom one, uh, one fails. How do we see that? Well, we are going to start with two vectors in this space. y1, y2, y3, okay? And we know that, excuse me, we know that x1 plus x2 plus x3 equals one, and y1 plus y2 plus y3 equals one. And I'm gonna look at x plus y, okay? So this, on the one hand, seems pretty straightforward to do and like it's gonna work because based on my definitions of adding matrices, this yields another vector with two components. Okay, so that's fine, except that the space V is not just the space of vectors with three components. It is also the space of vectors with components whose components satisfy this relationship. Okay, so then I'm gonna try to go in here and I'm gonna say, great, so I got another vector with three components, question, is the sum of these three components, is this equal to one, right? Again, going back up here, that needs to be true of every single element in this space. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try it out here and you can see how this is not gonna work out. If I group together all the X's, X1 plus X2 plus X3, so, you know, first let me say this left-hand side equals x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus, and then grouping together all of the y's. So y1 plus y2 plus y3, okay? And this equals, well, the x's going back up here, that's what they satisfy, right? Um, I started off with a vector x in the space, which goes along, you know, with that uh, uh, condition. So down here, x1 plus x2 plus x3 is 1. 
Similarly, I started with a vector y in the space, which means that its components satisfied that. So going down here, this is also 1. So I get 1 plus 1 equals 2, right? So that does not satisfy the condition I should have gotten. All right, and you can go back and see that if I, you know, uh, you know, it doesn't matter now, axiom one fails, this is not a vector space. But again, if I were to go back and I, and I change this plus and I instead subtracted the two vectors, right? Nothing would have changed. This would have been minus, minus, minus. Um, I would have had minus, minus, minus. And then this just would have been a minus here and a minus there. I would have gotten zero. Still not what needs to be true for this space to be a vector space or to satisfy the first axiom. Okay, so first axiom fails. Um, let me show you uh, the second axiom failing. So axiom two fails. All right, how do we see that? So take my vector x one more time, satisfying the sum of its components being one. Great, take a real number alpha and multiply it times the vector x. By our definitions, every component gets multiplied by alpha. Um, question, is the sum, is it true that the sum of the components of this new vector equal to one? Is that true? Well, this equals alpha times x1 plus x2 plus x3, which equals alpha times what we started off assuming that that x1 plus x2 plus x3 ones. So I'm going to put that in here, alpha times 1, which gives me alpha. Now, if alpha equals 1, then yes, this axiom is satisfied. For every other, literally every other alpha value, the axiom fails. Um, but in the vector space axioms, axiom 2 does not say, oh, let alpha be equal to 1, <laughs> and then verify the axiom. No, it says let alpha be any real number. So uh, in this case, we can see that that's not going to work. So axiom two fails. All right, so I'm going to erase this and then show you what, if I, if I were doing this problem, I would have done first, which is just to show that axiom five fails. What is axiom five? Remember, that's the existence of the zero element. Vector spaces need to have a zero element uh, to be vector spaces. So number three here, axiom five fails. Okay, so why does axiom 5 fail? Well, I'm looking for a zero element, um, and, I, and I'm looking here at vectors that have three components, right? Uh, which, you know, whose, comp whose uh, components sum to one. Okay. The only reasonable candidate for a zero element for the space is the vector whose components are all zero. This is the zero element for V3, the set of vectors with three components, which is almost what this space in this example is, except we have now added this condition on the sum of the components. Okay, so if I take this as my zero vector, um, then what's gonna happen? Well, uh, if I try to see if this, is in the, this vector is in the space, I would add its components, and do I get one? No, I do not. Um, no. Okay, so the vector zero is not in this space. I believe we called it V. I'm going to scroll up. Yes. Zero is not in this space V. Okay. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that the space V has no zero components. But again, because this is a space of vectors, okay, and if I were to, you know, uh, uh, take a little space down here, um, whatever the zero vector Z is, it has to have the property that any vector in the space plus the zero vector has to be the vector in the space. Well, you can see how this runs into trouble, right? Vector x has this form. Vector z has this unknown form. We're assuming we don't know that it's zero, zero, zero. So in order to for, for this equation to make sense, um, if I subtract this vector to the right-hand side, so that I have a minus x1, x2, x3, based on my definition of matrix subtraction, I get the fact that the unknown z vector, which is the zero vector for the space, 
um, is indeed the 0, 0, 0 vector, right? That is, as we've just shown here, the only vector in this space that satisfies um, the condition for being a zero vector. The problem is that it's actually not in this space because while it satisfies this condition, it does not satisfy this condition for to, you know to be in this space. So hence the same conclusion that we got here. Zero is not in the space. Axiom five fails and not a vector space. So again, you could keep going through and checking axioms that fail. It might be a good idea to, to try one on your own just to make sure you can um, uh, uh, do this uh, on your own. But uh, axioms one, two, and five, as I mentioned earlier, are go-to axioms when you want to show that a space is not a vector space. Very often, one or more of these axioms will fail in those settings.